Hi everyone, it is July 11, 2019. Tropical Storm Barry forms in Gulf of Mexico, expected to become Hurricane Barry on Friday, a day early than the forecast yesterday. All right, uh, you guys. Again, I'm going to say prepare for the worst. Prepare for the worst. If Americans are just not capable of getting that weather is used as a weapon at this point, I said that last year with all of the flash flooding that was occurring. I have said it repeatedly. I've said it so much just this past month, every single day flash flooding that is destroying people's homes, businesses, communities, uh, destroying the infrastructure, roads and bridges, uh, if they can't or don't want the truth about what is taking place. When they see that this, that this tropical storm, it was generated in Georgia or even mainstream media saying Missouri if uh, then they are gone they're the walking dead they're they're just not their brains have been shut off what does that mean what are the implications of having so many people who are incapable of taking in the obvious reality that we are living today. That means that they are a danger to all of us because they allow this destruction to continue on. And more and more of you listening will be destroyed. Eight years ago, I can't recall one subscriber suffering the consequences of what was taking place, all of the agendas. Now, I have, I have way too many subscribers who are suffering the consequences and I will have more. Who will it be? And before I go on, I just want to say I saw, I, I see people, you know, attacking one another. Somebody writes a comment about, you know, their kids going to college in New Orleans. And then they get attacked. Uh, attacked. I, I, you know, judged, you know, not verbatim, but the essence. How dare you allow your children to go to college? yada 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 please understand that it's a very stressful time for all of us a very stressful time and baseless judgments you really do need far more details to understand why one makes the decisions that they do before you just smack them in the face with a judgment, it only increases the stress. The other thing that I want to say is I find it interesting people are still talking about when the shit hits the fan. Have you not seen that the shit is hitting the fan every single day? Is it just because it hasn't come to you that you don't think that it has arrived? That it's been ongoing? Ongoing for years and years. I don't get it. I don't get it. You know, the fires in California. Everyone Every one of those fires drew so much attention, so many people posting videos on the fires and people losing their homes and 
where were they going and you know, the people that lost their homes and all who didn't make it out of the fires. I do not see that amount of attention or care or, compa or compassion for those who have had to endure these floods. I see so few posting on these floods and I don't understand that. Is it because fires are just more dramatic or something? Well, those who survived the f fires are no different from those who survive having their homes flooded out. And many people are dying, by the way, in these floods. So, I don't know. Maybe, I, I don't get it, you know. And I hear nothing from my California subscribers. Nothing from them in terms of all of these flash floods. Oh, so much was coming in when it was the fires. So what's going on there? So let's get into it. I want to thank my subscriber for sending along a link to, yep, it's live. It's live. Started streaming three hours ago, Tropical Storm Barry, New Orleans, live coverage from WWL-TV. This is apparently the Tropical Storm. So you might want to bookmark this live coverage. Yeah, live coverage. Watching more and more people get destroyed of what is not a tropical storm or a hurricane. They closed all the floodgates in New Orleans, closing all 244 floodgates along the length of the levees in New Orleans and the surrounding area. It looks pretty cool and I feel confident about it, said a nine-year-old. Really? Uh, you're taking a quote from a nine-year-old. So they're closing these gates because of how high the Mississippi, the Mississippi is. The closing of the floodgates affects a lot of things, including the trains, which have some tracks that go through the gates opening. It's a big decision for the Flood Protection Authority. Highly unusual. I don't think anybody who's lived alive Anybody who's alive and lives in New Orleans has gone through this before. We're experiencing unusual circumstances with the Mississippi River so high. It's unbelievably high. Twice as normal, twice as high as normal for this time of year. So the floodgates, will all of them will be closed by Thursday evening. So apparently they're expecting quite a lot to happen. The latest New Orleans mayor declares emergency. So, have they called for evacuations? I don't know. I haven't seen anything. But, here the Gulf Coast storm could bring rain to upstate New York next week, but details are fuzzy. This is the reporting of mainstream media. Remember the hurricanes? I, I posted videos, you know, and yeah, my, my uh, expression of incredulity continues on from last year when hurricanes were, well, we had several hurricanes sitting off the coast of Mexico, uh, just sitting there, five days twirling around, 
And yeah, the forecast. Uh, well, it's going to go through Mexico, go through a desert, go to Arizona, go through to Arizona and Utah, and then affect 250 million Americans. It would continue to be a hurricane. It would continue to be a hurricane throughout. It would just continue on as a hurricane throughout the country, all the way to the East Coast. Now we have this Gulf Coast storm. Well, first it was Missouri or Georgia. Then it goes down to the Gulf. Uh, it sits there now. Apparently it's formed into a tropical storm. And now they're forecasting it's going to go on up to upstate New York. I uh, There's nothing you can say at this point. But listen to this. Here we have evacuations. Well, flash flooding is forcing people in Nebraska to evacuate their homes. The Salvation Army says hundreds of people in Kearney are sleeping in shelters. Heavy rain Monday flooded some streets with up to four feet of water. Police rescued about 25 people overnight Tuesday who were trapped in their vehicles. Emergency officials say the nearby Wood River will reach historic levels today, which could cause even more flooding. No serious injuries have been reported. So, more flooding to Nebraska, and uh, here. Dozens of volunteers fill sandbags at Wood River High School, preparing for another round of flooding. For myself, I'm not using too many. I'm going on about 15 to 20. Others, I'm helping others get theirs, you know, as much as they can. Vince Boudreau has lived in Wood River for 40 years. He says he's never seen it this bad. Sometimes we just got to accept what's going on and try to do the best we can. That's all we can do. Mayor. No, that's not all you can do, sir. You can do some research to find out what really is taking place. Do some research on weather modification and geoengineering. Craig Kramer is expecting the worst. It's going to be four inches higher than the last time, and last time we had water through 80% of the town, two to three feet deep. All right, so more flooding in Nebraska, Mississippi River. They closed 244 floodgates, New Orleans, emergency. It's just, it goes on and on and on. But... This guy apparently is a climate scientist, Paul Beckwith. Grave flooding risks in New Orleans. Yet again. Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. And of course, this is the uh, main attraction, Shackleton. He's been hiding on me the last few videos, but um, I managed to find him this time. He's only got so many good uh, hiding spots. So, in this video, I'm going to talk, I'm going to continue my discussions on the theme of the game of risk and the climate casino. You know, with the uh, jet streams being so fractured and distorted and broken, and... Uh, That's what I really want you to, wanted you to hear. Th th this guy, look, you know, well... The jet stream, fractured and broken. It is, actually. Um, I will link below to all of these sites, but the jet stream way up north and way down south. And this is, uh, let's see, let's go back to today. It's July. 11. And you see these strange gaps in the jet stream and dips and what the electromagnetic frequencies. When you think about what harp alone could do to all the natural processes, but then think about all of the smaller facilities all of these electromagnetic frequencies that are artificially 
created by man, the technology, the facilities, the Doppler radar, all of these electromagnetic frequencies artificially induced. They have so, we are at a point of collapse. This is not because of climate change, because of man wanting to control the Earth's natural processes. And they have so, so destroyed our Earth's environment. Shit is hitting the fan every day. And how we could possibly recover from what they have done, I, I don't know at this point. But if you just go through here, you can see these very defined cuts in the jet stream. Well, and the splitting of the jet stream. Yeah, it is fractured. Beckwith, was that his name? Yeah, Paul Beckwith. It is. But you're not talking about the real reason, the cause of the fracture and the brokenness of our jet stream. All right, I want to also play just a few minutes of this video that was sent along to me. State of climate, emergency, emergency. Well, it's happening. It's happening. What am I talking about? Well, let's just start. If a brown dwarf, which is an electron producing machine, passed through our solar system, we would see electrons on all of our instruments. And that's what we've been seeing, uh, an increase in electrons. And we know they've been increasing because now 90% of the electron measuring instruments have been taken offline. Why would that happen? All at the same time, roughly at the same time, to hide the fact there are more electrons. The magnetosphere confuses people. The BZ and the BX... All right. I didn't listen to the full video, so the higher truth rises... I'm not entirely sure where he's going with this, but I know where I am going with this. They have taken offline sites that um, have the data on electrons. Okay. Air Force creates storm with powerful microwave pulses from NEXRAD weather radar. The powerful microwave energy pulses from the radar station causes electron cascade, stripping of electrons in the atmosphere. This electron cascade process is proved to cause plasma heating in the atmosphere, reaching above multiple hundreds of degrees. Additionally, the ions, which are stripped, can produce moisture condensation which is the precursor to rain formation. The plasma which formed from the electron cascade also reflects radar microwave signals like a mirror in the sky. Thus the large clouds of stripped electrons actually reflect back the same radar signals which create the cascade to begin with. All right, everything will be linked to below. They are, they are, we're now living in this artificially created environment. Man is causing so much destruction and damage by what man is doing. And a lot of people are suffering because of it. Whether it is their homes or businesses or farms flooded out, whether it is because they have lost loved ones who have died in these floods, whether it is because they are suffering the effects, the biological effects 
of the use of all of these frequencies. Oh, the list is long. And it's getting longer by the day. So I think a lot of people who are quote unquote awake still are walking around with this normalcy bias. Perhaps thinking that things are not that bad. Things are really unbelievably bad. So this is a a PowerPoint presentation by our military. Plasma physics and high energy density. Artificial ionization layers. The effect of energy input into ionosphere is researched at HARP. Ionospheric heater in Alaska. The high frequency radiation to heat the ionosphere generated artificial layers. <clears throat> Excuse me artificial layers. So the high frequency radiation, that's what Doppler radar is emitting into our ionosphere. So I'm going to read some excerpts from some articles that I have uh, brought up again. The ultimate weapon of mass destruction, owning the weapon for military use and here. There's a whole lot of people talking about the sun, the grand solar minimum, that all of what we are seeing is natural. They talk about the magnetic shift and they think that's natural. No, and, but these are the people who are not figuring in the technology that not only the US military is using We've got Russia, we've got China, we've got uh, Brazil, we've got countries all over the world using these high frequencies, shooting them up into the ionosphere, pushing it up. What happens when they, uh, well, input into the computer, release energy, boom, it shoots back to the earth as extremely low frequencies. It penetrates the earth. It affects our magnetic core, it affects everything. Har as a gigantic heater that can cause major disruptions in the ionosphere creating not just holes but long incisions in the protective layer that keeps deadly radiation from bombarding the planet. I will be reading excerpts of Dr. Rosalie Bertel, who died a couple of years ago, but this is no lightweight. And I'll read some of her um, uh, just who she is. Uh, Richard Williams, a physicist and consultant to the David Sarnoff Laboratory in Princeton, said this about HARP. It constitutes an irresponsible act of global vandalism. He and others fear a secret second stage where HARP would beam much more energy into the ionosphere. That could produce a severe disruption of the upper atmosphere at one location that may produce effects that spread rapidly around the earth for years. The flooding that we are seeing is not just happening in our country. Yes, I will be posting a video on worldwide flooding. Italy, Spain, China, uh, Indonesia, uh, Nepal, uh, it, it, Russia. Uh, it, this, they have so destroyed the Earth's natural processes. So when you listen to these, they actually call themselves scientists who talk about the jet stream, the ruptures, the fractures, the brokenness. And then when you listen to people about the grand solar minimum or the electrons, now I'm not saying anything about the 
truth, uh, higher truth rises because I admit I did not listen to the whole thing, but when I listened to, ah, they've taken off site data uh, related to electrons when I know that they have been stripping electrons, the ele electron cascading, um, just from the electromagnetic frequencies that they are using. Well, if we can't get on the same page, they have successfully turned harp, harp facilities, they have successfully turned the electromagnetic spectrum into the ultimate weapon of mass destruction. So, um, this is an interview with Rosalie Bertel. But who is Rosalie Bertel? Born in 1929 in the United States, she earned a PhD in bio metry at the Catholic University of America in 1966. In 1966, there were not too many women in the sciences. In the sciences, uh, this woman has a unbelievable uh, history. Um, she holds nine honorary, honorary, sorry, doctors degrees. She's won numerous prizes, among them the Right Livelihood Award. She co-founded multiple organizations, including the International Institute of Concern for Public Health, Toronto, Canada, the International Physicians for Humanitarian Medicine, Medicine in Geneva, Switzerland. Um, she has worked as an appraiser for the United Nations, worked in more than 60 countries for uh, institutions. She was um, an advisor to the EPA and other federal agencies in the United States. This is about her book, Planet Earth, The Latest Weapon of War. And this is what she says. What is planned now are climate and weather wars. Wars in which earthquakes and volcanoes, floods, droughts, hurricanes, and monsoon rains will play a role. Since World War II, the development and employment of new military technologies in the East and the West have been the basis of destructions in the very life system. The book, its scope, ranges from chemical, biological, and nuclear technological development and warfare to the post-nuclear, especially in the field of electromagnetic plasma weapons, not only threatening to wipe out all life on Earth using technologies, that are able to produce huge catastrophes, but also threatening to destroy the planet itself. Vietnam War, uh, the experiments on an artificially prolonged monsoon season with artificially intensified severe weather episodes using lethal chemicals such as Monsanto's Agent Orange, which was dispersed through spraying by airplanes, airplanes so that the trees would lose their leaves. These experiments moved on to the attempt of creating a hole in the ozone layer with the objective of triggering a collapse of Vietnamese agriculture through the induction of unfiltered cosmic radiation consisting of gamma rays, x-rays, infrarays, UV rays, or certain other microwaves from which intact layers of the atmosphere protect the earth. This is our military. They are crazy, psychopathic nut jobs, and they have destroyed the earth's environment above and below. The hole in the ozone layer above Antarctica and the one that has formed recently and for the first time over the Arctic, probably due to radio activity from Fukushima allow numerous types of radiation, including the most harmful, to penetrate the atmosphere 
the earthquake, the tsunami that hit the area of Fukushima, induced by man. Experiments with electromagnetic waves and the heating up of the upper layers of the atmosphere called ionosphere from an altitude of 20 kilometers on began began in 1960s, 1970s by influencing this electromag electromagnetically charged layer through the use of ionospheric heaters. The most famous is HARP uh, in Alaska. The Arctic region has been subjected to a deliberate thawing process through the utilization of electromagnetic, extremely low frequencies, those waves, action that seems to have been agreed upon by the former Soviet Union and the United States in 1974. Scientists, researchers, and the population are made to believe that it's greenhouse gases, those that CO2, by the civilian industry and soccer moms driving their SUVs. No. It's I have also posted videos on Kafka Winston World how there was a uh, a small uh, airplane flying above and the pilot noticed all of this these black specks all over the Greenland ice I think it was Greenland and the ice was mel melting they can dump black carbon dust to melt ice, but they can use extremely low frequencies to melt the ice as well. Many smaller facilities for manipulating the layers of the atmosphere with these waves, electromagnetic waves. Uh, you got several in Alaska, you've got them in Colorado, Puerto Rico, uh, northern Norway, several in this in Russia. Um, you have them in the Netherlands, Sweden, Israel, Australia, China, other countries, uh, northern Germany, about two dozens, two dozen of these facilities are estimated to be globally operational today. That was in the year 2013. In the year 2013, I'm sorry, a new one was built in Sicily, and Italy sure is experiencing their floods. When was this, uh, this was, this was written in 2017. Okay, um, but Rosalie Bertel's book was published way before, I believe way before 2013. So, let's see, all of these facilities a bombardment or heating up of the ionosphere can occur simultaneously, separately or in opposition to each other, be it for experimental purposes or a planned attack. Think about that. Think about these facilities operating together, separately, doing experiments. Are they coordinating their experiments? or operating to thwart the operation of another country you're talking you're talking these frequencies is it a surprise our jet stream is broken the electrically charged air of the ionosphere the plasma a unique aggregate state beyond a solid fluid or gaseous state is heated up using the power of the ionos ionospheric heaters that can add up to gigawatts, billions of watts. This operation is causing the plasma to densify and to bulge, creating a mirror-like reflector from which rays of energy sent by ionospheric heaters can be bounced off at any desired angle and be redirected back to a corresponding point on or under the Earth's surface from there, the great destruction emanates. 
that until now could not be explained as an artificially induced catastrophe. The use of ionospheric heating with pulse electromagnetic waves as one of the main techniques for environmental modification is especially potent in unleashing or amplifying latent or beginning motion being along earthquake lines or within active volcanoes such processes utilizing extremely low frequency waves are capable of penetrating and cutting even through the interior of the earth and of causing disturbances at and within its very core where the magnetic field of our planet is originating. Electromagnetic waves of different types can also be used to change the jet stream. Fast winds moving around the globe on the northern and southern hemispheres being a barrier to temperatures up north or down south so that more heat or cold can stream in. The waves can be used to change the course of the vapor streams. Clouds that move around the globe to influence the development of droughts and floods. They can be used to get more energy than normal transported to certain places, producing fires, thunderstorms, extreme lightning down to the soil, or even explosions that resemble nuclear explosions. They can be used to keep freak weather conditions on a certain place for a long time. They can be used to move and build up large storms and to influence ocean currents like El Nino and La Nina. The largest is hard. Gordon MacDonald, in his article, How to Wreck the Environment. Okay. Gordon MacDonald, former de deputy director of the Institute for Geophysics and Physics at the University of California and member of the President's Science Advisory Committee under President Lyndon B. Johnson, 1968. He said this on geophysical warfare in the chapter, How to Wreck the Environment. He describes how the energy fields of the Earth can be used to manipulate the weather, resulting in, a melt, in the melting of polar caps, the destruction of the ozone layer, and the trigger, triggering of earthquakes. McDonald therefore established in the 1960s that these weapons were actually in production and that the whole process would practically go unnoticed by their victims if potentially utilized. There was talk, Newsweek, 1958, climate control is coming. The means to destroy the planet are those of geoengineering, including electromagnetic plasma weapons and all additional forms of weather wars. If these technologies used in an enhanced form, if the increase of rhythmically pulsed electromagnetic waves and the effect of their resonance becomes practically unlimited, the Earth could possibly even be torn apart, plunge into the sun, or in the last consequence be hurled out into space. Special scalar electromagnetic effects of resonance could be instantly reflected when originating from the Earth and penetrating space. A result could be the Earth's destruction through the sun or the dynamic balance bet uh, originating from the Earth and penetrating space. We in the Earth and the Moon sharing the same magnetic field could fall apart. Nikola Tesla, the most innovative mind in regard to the work with electromagnetic waves, predicted and warned of all these scenarios as a theoretical possibility at the beginning of the last century already. So, scalar weapons you can learn about if you want to continue reading. Um, I will link below to everything. Here's another very good article. And this uh, documentary on HARP.
I'll include it in other videos, but even Wired was writing on. Wow, okay. A few minutes before seven, throbbing arcs of green and red light began to form on his monitor, eventually coalescing into an egg shape. Other shards of light shimmered, gathered into a jagged ring and spun around the oval center. This is really good stuff. What is this about? An aurora borealis. It was triggered in Alaska area and no, it wasn't triggered by solar winds. It was triggered by Peterson, a scientist at HARP. He did it with high frequency active auroral research program $250 uh, well 30 acre array of antennas capable of spewing 3.6 megawatts of energy into the mysterious plasma of the ionosphere and they can turn the sky different colors but no other people are posting videos and claiming whatever the hell they're claiming, but no, it has nothing to do with the technology that the military have. They don't have the technology to do this, and people listen to these people. Okay, well, what can you do? What can you do? Um, yeah, more and more people are getting destroyed as we have so many people posting their lies their lives. All links are below.